Rome wasn't built in a day, but this neural network was. I'm going to build this from scratch without PyTorch or TensorFlow. A neural network is a machine learning algorithm trained on data that can predict complex things. And I'm going to build one to classify digits using the MNIST handwritten digit dataset, which 3Blue1Brown called the hello world of deep learning. So in this video, I go from opening an empty Python file to having it predict my own handwritten digits in just four hours, all while trying my best to stick to the math and avoid vibe coding with ChatGPT. Okay, so before this challenge, I already knew quite a bit about neural networks thanks to 3Blue1Brown's series and other creators with awesome videos about how they really work. I encourage you to check them out. So I opened a blank Python file, and the first thing to do is get MNIST loaded in. MNIST contains 70,000 images of handwritten digits split into two groups, 60,000 for training and 10,000 for testing. A single image is composed of 28 by 28 pixels, containing values between 0 and 1 representing the brightness of that pixel. Using this dataset is really convenient. We don't have to bother collecting tens of thousands of handwritten digits, scanning them, and doing all the pre-processing. And it turns out, that's the hard part of machine learning, gathering data that can generalize well to real-world tasks. And, as it turns out, this dataset ended up being too pre-processed for me. But anyways, I imported the MNIST dataset and converted it to a .npz file. I don't know what an .npz file is, but a quick Google search says that this is how np arrays are stored, np being numpy, which is going to make the math behind this much easier. So we'll just open another Python file for our actual neural network. And the first thing we'll do is load in our dataset. It's already split into four sections from when we saved it, so we just need to reference each section like this. Now it's time to actually build a skeleton of what the neural network will look like, with code, of course. So to do this, I didn't really care about predicting or training, so I just chose the first image of the dataset to work with to understand everything a bit better. As you can see, it's labeled as a 5, and I also decided to print the value of a random pixel as well. In total, we need to implement three things. Forward propagation, for predicting the numbers, back propagation, which is a lot of math for updating the weights and biases of all the neurons, and gradient descent for reducing the loss and improving the model's accuracy. So let's start with forward prop. By far the most useful function here was dot shape from NumPy, which made me understand things a lot easier. I was planning to have a hidden layer with 16 neurons total. So each neuron has 784 incoming connections, but that's just one neuron. So to represent all the weights, we need 16 arrays of 784 weights each, one array for each neuron. I'm sure that keeping track of the shape of the data will be very easy and won't haunt me at all in the future. Honestly, I breezed through the code for the hidden layer and output layer. This at symbol is matrix multiplication, by the way. While the hidden layer has 16 neurons, the output has 10, each corresponding to the model's confidence in each of the digits in the form of a probability distribution. But Faisal, all we've done so far is write the definitions of the neurons. This doesn't look anything like a probability distribution. The answer to this problem is softmax. It's an equation that basically normalizes the output into a probability distribution. This is really important because now the sum of all probabilities is 1, which is what we expect from a probability distribution. And with that out of the way, I also wanted to implement an activation function. There's this jumble of four letters that looks like my cat walked across the keyboard, but surprisingly it actually stands for something. Rectified linear unit. And it just looks like this. But Faisal! Isn't that just a line? Well, yes, it is. At first, I didn't want to write any activation function to see what would happen, but this is literally my first time ever building a neural network, and I didn't want to mess with anything yet, so I just implemented ReLU for now. And everything we just did, that's forward propagation. It takes in an image, represented as 784 values for the brightness of each pixel, and spits out a probability distribution. I did this in one hour. But that's the easy part. Now it's time for the main challenge of neural networks, which is backpropagation. But before that, we need to know what the loss function is. So we'll need to take this probability distribution and compare it to a one-hot vector, which is just what the image actually is. This isn't Schrodinger's digit, so the probability is always going to be 1 for what it actually is, and 0 everywhere else. So back to backpropagation. We have a total of 12,730 parameters to tweak, and they're spread across two layers. 
This adds quite a bit of complication to the math, and I was kind of bouncing around from resource to resource because I really didn't want to use ChatGPT. But I did end up using ChatGPT, and at first I was trying to be selective and have it just tell me the relevant part, but I kind of slipped up and started vibe coding a bit. Mainly out of frustration because, despite my meticulous record keeping of the shapes of everything, I just kept getting wrong dimensions on my matrix multiplications. I tried throwing in transposes and flattens and reshapes, and it was just a whole... Thing. If it makes you feel better though, I suffered with ChatGPT for half an hour trying to fix my dimensions, so I got what I deserved. So now we have backpropagation done on just one training example. Of course, we need to do this for a lot more examples. And the way we do that is gradient descent. Since the training data has 60,000 images, I decided to train the network on each image once. Since the dataset is shuffled, it shouldn't overfit this way. But Faisal, how will you know how accurate our model is? I made a separate function that tested the model on 100 random images of the testing dataset. These images are part of MNIST, but not part of the actual training data, so it's a good reference. But it turns out that this model can't generalize well, and I'll explain why in just a moment. So based on training the model on each of these images exactly once, I was getting about 60 to 70% accuracy, which is honestly higher than I expected. Remember that there's just one hidden layer of 16 neurons, no mini-batching and no data augmentation, which I'll talk about at the end. To improve the accuracy, I decided to loop 600,000 times, with each loop taking a random image out of the 60,000 available for training. Now this probably makes the model overfit the data, I'm not sure, but this ended up getting me about 80 to 90% accuracy, and sometimes up to 97%. So now it was time for my own test. Of course, I could pull a random image from the testing dataset, and it would get it right with very high confidence. I mean, look, it's literally 99.999999% sure that this is a zero. But here's the thing, all the MNIST digits are scanned in the same way, resized in the same way, centered in the same way, and so on, which means it's really sensitive to outside data that didn't go through the pre-processing. So to test the model, I went into Photoshop and drew four of my own digits. So this is clearly a 1, but it only thinks so with 31.9% certainty. Meanwhile, it's 35.1% sure it's an 8, so obvious fail. Okay, next we have a 2. It's 46% sure it's a 2, and no other digit has a higher confidence, so it actually got this one correct. Now we have a 9. Okay, this is a really bad fail. It's 88% sure it's a 7. Alright, last digit. Wow, it's 99.6% sure it's a 6. That's relieving. So the total it got on the digits I drew myself in Photoshop was 2 out of 4. On one hand, that's crazy impressive. I can't believe I went from an empty Python file to a literal neural network that can classify my own digits in just 4 hours. But on another hand, that's really off. How come it's getting really high accuracy, sometimes as high as 97% on the testing data, but when I make my own, it's just 50%? Well, remember how I said MNIST is sensitive to outside data? My digits aren't perfectly centered, and they aren't scanned like the original MNIST digits. I literally just drew them with a Photoshop brush. So this means that MNIST, although cool for learning neural networks, doesn't generalize well. The solution to this problem is called data augmentation, which involves covering, adding noise, or rotating each image. That way, the neural network is forced to learn each digit for what it is, and not rely on patterns that arise from pre-processing all the digits in the same way. And that's why the hard part of machine learning isn't the code, it's getting data that's good for generalizing. In fact, there's another dataset called eMNIST that has some of these data augmentations built into it. And that doesn't mean that nothing can be done in the code either. The truth is, there's a lot of ways this can be optimized. I could increase the number of neurons, or even add more hidden layers. I could implement mini-batching. I could use the eMNIST dataset, or even write my own Python script to augment the data in my own way. Or I could ignore all of this and try to build all of this from scratch in C, where I won't have the luxury of NumPy and will have to dynamically allocate memory for arrays and matrices. Tell me which upgrade you want to see first, and I'll do the most requested one from the comments.